So we're at MWC 22 in Barcelona. I'm here with Shahid Ahmed. He is Group EVP of New Ventures and Innovation at NTT. Shahid, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So can you tell us about your job at NTT? Because this sounds like a great role to have right now. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here and great to see people in person. Um, my role at NTT is to lead up all of our innovation and new ventures agenda. What that basically means is we launch new products and services for the rest of the company. Uh, we also incubate new ideas and take them to market. Okay. So private 5G is, without a doubt, one of the hottest topics in the industry uh, right now. Uh, why do you think that is and why is it so hot right at this point? Three main drivers. One, many of the regulators around the world has appropriated spectrum directly to enterprises. That's unprecedented. Never have we seen the government taking spectrum that's typically gone to telecom companies uh, now going to enterprises and businesses. And so that's really ushered in a whole new set of applications, use cases, much like how Wi-Fi uh, trajectory in the early days. The second reason is digital transformation is happening at, at a level we have not seen before at industrial manufacturing companies. And for them, security is a key driver behind anything that's connected inside the factory floor. Private 5G offers superior security over anything out there today. Uh, with licensed spectrum, it adds a whole set of new capabilities as well. I'd say the third thing is the technology itself, from software to hardware, virtualization, all of those things have really allowed enterprises to take a telecom technology and adapt it to an IT world. Um, and we've seen a lot of improvements in terms of reliability, performance in the IT side, and telecom is almost catching up to the IT world right. in that respect. And so that convergence is happening, and I think those three things have really enabled and uh, driven a lot of things around private 5G. Okay. I mean, so clearly there's a lot of interest, and like you say, a, a number of different things have all come together at the same time to make this much more of a possibility. But there must be a lot of questions around the, the business case and the economics, because this is still quite a commitment for any company to, to take on. Are there any particular uh, business models can, that can help make this easier for enterprises to start to adapt? Great question. I think there's two things. One, uh, private 5G is very quickly um, reaching Wi-Fi economics. What I mean by that is that it's, it's not that expensive to build out a private 5G network for a factory or a warehouse or mining operations. Um, and the reason for it is uh, we, we had an example just recently with an automobile company. They wanted to provide outdoor coverage. Wi-Fi, it would have taken at least, um, you know, over 200, 300 base stations or access points to provide that coverage versus two base stations from a private 5G perspective. Um, so, you know, economically, from a just deployment perspective, I think Wi-Fi, uh, private 5G provides superior economics, but also operationally as well. Because if you think about it, you got to manage, should you, do you want to manage 200 APs versus two APs? Um, and so a lot of CIOs like that. Okay. Um, there is a case though, isn't there, for 5G and Wi-Fi to be coexisting in these kind of networks. And Wi-Fi is something that enterprises are already familiar with and they know how it works. So do you see that being a kind of a, a pretty strong scenario for a lot of companies? Yeah, absolutely. I think, first of all, Wi-Fi is not going. And a lot of noise in the system is around, will private 5G replace Wi-Fi? The answer is no. You're always going to have Wi-Fi. And, you know, even in the factory floor, there's going to be employees using their iPads and they're connected to Wi-Fi. Only those OT devices like robotic arms, conveyor belts, SCADA systems, they're going to be connected to private 5G from a security standpoint, much more robust. Okay. So, I mean, uh, private 5G, it looks at the moment like this is going to be, you know, it's a growing market, probably quite a sizable market. So there are 
then lots of companies that want to get in on the action and, and be part of the, the, the proposition. Um, do you think that CSPs, you know, traditional telcos, are in a good place to be the, the lead provider, the lead partner to these enterprises? Because we're already seeing some uh, statistics in the market that suggest that they might be the kind of the, the secondary partner, bringing the connectivity, but maybe not being that, that lead um, uh, lead partner for the enterprise. We agree, even as a telecom company, we think we need a different approach to private 5G, and it has to be CIO-centric, enterprise-first mindset. Um, without that, you're basically taking a telecom solution, retrofitting it to an IT environment, and that's not a scalable or even an economic model. Um, we believe that those players, particularly managed services providers like NTT, um, they're better suited to provide that kind of CIO-centric solution because they already manage the IT environment. They already manage the security environment. And so it's a natural extension. Um, but I, we believe that the private 5G solution has to be in a IT-centric model, key requirement. Okay. So, I mean, obviously that uh, we're here at MWC, so private 5G is driving a lot of conversations, but there's an awful lot else out there that enterprises need and are looking for. So what, what are the other big, you know, talking points? What are, what are enterprises coming to you and wanting to know about and, and to find out where you're innovating, essentially? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of innovation happening uh, as a result of COVID. Um, it's really pushed the enterprises to, um, take another look at IT infrastructure. For a long time, over the, I would say four or five years, everything was going to the cloud. Um, many of the applications, back office and front office. I think um, because of COVID and because of remote work and because of nomadic employees, um, it has really uh, put a, a lot of different um, perspectives on how to manage an IT infrastructure. And for that reason, a lot of new innovation around RPA, robotic process automation, digitizing the processes themselves, workflow processes themselves. NTT just recently partnered with ServiceNow to address that exact problem. Um, by addressing the process flow and the business processes themselves, you're, ena you're enabling employees to be digitized. Um, and I think that's where we're going to see a lot more innovation in the next few years and near future. Absolutely. Hybrid work, work practices. I think we all know a bit, know, bit more about that now these days, more than we did two years ago. Um, so here in Barcelona, I'm sure you're you know, going from hall to hall, meeting room, meeting room to, to, to meet people and talk to them. But that also happens in the evenings, in the town, in Barcelona, in the restaurants and bars. What's your go-to tapas when you're in here in Barcelona? What's the first thing you're looking for on the menu to eat, uh, and what drink would you have with it? Great question. Um, well, I got to tell you, Barico, uh ham. If you haven't had that, that is the choice of uh, meat and and tapas. Uh, I would recommend, of course, tomato uh, tomato uh, bread. Yeah, I think absolutely. that. I think I had my whole share, and I probably won't eat that for the rest of the year after leaving Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a very good choice. And uh, wine, beer? I, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, uh, of the, uh, the, one of the reds. Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's from one of the regions. I'm forgetting the name right now. But uh, it's, it's a Catalonian wine. You're a sure. vino tinto man. It, so, yes, yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. absolutely. You're, I mean, you're in good, good, uh, <laughs> good company there, I think. Okay, uh, Shahid. Thanks for joining us today. Great to talk to you and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you.